Nintendo is no stranger to party games. In fact, you could probably call them the king, with one of the most beloved and well-known party game series ever made. Although their butt is starting to slip off the throne to some of their recent games. Almost all of their consoles have some type of innovation centered around co-op or party play. And the GameCube is no exception. Although they weren't exactly Mario Party level, I remember playing a lot of other party games on the GameCube when I was bored and had nothing else to do. And at the time, I thought they were awesome. But now I'm older, wiser, and slightly less bored. So I think now is the perfect time to figure out if they really were awesome. Or if they were, you know, not. Look everybody, the pictures from our cruise are ready. I've made a really cool photo album too. Muppets Party Cruise is less of a party game and more of a compilation of mini games for you to pick from. After you make and name a profile, you get to choose your character. I chose Animal, the best Muppet, in case you were wondering. And after that, it's basically free reign to do whatever you want. There's no board to move around on, it's just mini games that you can play. Most of them are cruise themed and normal, like this game of alternating shuffleboard, while some others are a little weirder. Like this one, where you roll around in a maze on beach balls, avoiding holes that trap you in tractor beams. There is nothing more fun than picking up chunks of stinky green cheese, especially in the sewer. Well, can't argue with that. In fact, my favorite part is when you get the magnet power up to attract the cheese. That's, that's the funnest part to me. Some of the other mini games involve doing stuff like sliding down a cave collecting gems, or standing on a stage avoiding tomatoes, and they're not really fun. You're just sort of there. There's this one game where you drive around on a sand dune and try to knock a beach ball into the void, and it's fucking terrible. Your car controls like a blimp, and the beach ball acts more like a bowling ball than anything else. It's just the worst. Plus, I'm pretty sure I saw this exact same thing in a monster truck game I used to play. There are some good games, like Speed Bingo, but it's kinda hard to fuck up Bingo, and it's like always fun to me. And there's a sucky version of the top ride mode from Kirby's Air Ride. But really, the only minigame that actually feels like a hectic party game is this one, where you're counting pigs that come in and out of a party. That's not a good thing if this is your best minigame. I mean, there are also minigames you can unlock, so I probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But I played and won every available minigame, and I don't have whatever I need to unlock the new ones. Maybe I'm just missing something, but either way, I'm done with this. I've never really been a fan of the whole number rating system, so to keep it simple I'll just give each game a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Muppet Party Cruise gets a thumbs down. There are some okay mini games, but it's not something I would ever sit down and play with people. Wow, isn't this an adorable opening to a game where all the characters are introduced to us? This brings back fond memories of whatever it is Donald Duck is doing right here. What happened to you, buddy? Ooh, we can play as Goofy, or whatever this thing is. Wait, actually, who is this guy? He didn't even have a name intro like everyone else. This guy full-on tackled Goofy a moment ago. But you guys are cool with him just tagging along, no questions asked? Oh, excuse me. His name is Billy. How could I forget? And he's apparently a ghost that lives on the outside of town? What? Um, oh. Okay. I don't want to know about the long past Scrooge has with this ghost of a dead child. So let's just move on, shall we? Things start off promising enough, the opening section has a lot of personality, and right off the bat makes me think Disney and not Mario Party Club. The first thing you'll notice when playing is that you move across the board using this wheel spinner thing. Each player can vote on where they want to go next, and the more players standing on the same space means a higher chance it'll be picked. And whatever is picked, you all move there as a group. Because moving as a group in a party game is always fun, isn't it? But when you get right down to it, none of that stuff really matters. If the mini games aren't good, then the game isn't good. And are the mini games good? No. No, they're not. First of all, the mini games are few and far between. And while some of them are passable, most of them are just uncreative garbage. After each minigame you awarded in gems, which is the currency in this game, and a star, if you were in first place. In this game, to win, you simply have to get a bingo on your character's board. And you remember what I said earlier? But it's kinda hard to fuck up bingo, and it's like always fun to me. Well, they fucked it up, and I hate this. What I think they were going for is that players would buy items at shops, which can only be used on specific colored tiles. So players could decide whether to place the items to try and win, or to use the items to try to mess up other people. The big problem is that the star you get for winning minigames works on any color tile. And since every minigame is easy as shit, it's only a matter of time until you win. So basically everything else in the game ends up being filler. After you win, you're all taken to one last minigame. And after that, you actually win and your character gets one wish. 
Hey, this is only a replica of Southern Island. I didn't have enough money, it's almost the same thing, right? Thumbs down, this game sucks. Actually, double thumbs down, because they fucked up bingo. This is just Monopoly. I don't know what I was expecting, but what I got was Monopoly. I like the loading screen, and uh, that Top Hat Monopoly guy has a voice, so that's cool. I have a new bid. But that's about it. I like Monopoly, especially video game Monopoly, where you don't have to argue about the rules. So thumbs up, I guess. Nickelodeon Party Blast is definitely one of the weirder ones. Before you even get into the game, there's like this two minute long intro, where all the playable characters just sort of run around doing random stuff with no real rhyme or reason. Now let's meet the contestants. Well, I gotta go with Jimmy here. Who could say no to that smile? Let me try to explain this jumbled mess of a level select. Just like Muppet Party Cruise, there's a list of mini games for you to choose from. But instead of just a bunch of different mini games, here there's only six, with just a bunch of different levels for variety. As for the mini games themselves, eh, yeah, they're alright. A lot of them are not impressive on their own. But since every mini game has like five different levels, and each level has its own variations that change how the mini game works, led to a lot of extra enjoyment out of games I originally thought I wouldn't like. A minigame that you crushed easily in the first level might be a real challenge in the second, and I appreciate that. The two minigames that I didn't like were this Rapids game, where the controls were so delayed and unresponsive, I did better by just taking my hands off the controller. And this, uh, Squirt game, You've chosen Squirt and Splash. which is just broken and terrible. Although some of the later levels were a bit more fun. The next two are pretty meh. The first is this pipe minigame, and the second is this food fight minigame, which I actually remember this one. I used to love it, but I think that was only because you end up making a mess by the end of it. The last two minigames I love. This basketball game is pretty easy, but it's still fun to explore the different environments. And this freefall soccer game, while the controls are a bit stiff, it's still pretty fun and engaging. But is it really fair to give a game a good rating based on one or two okay minigames? Um... Yes, yes it is, because I made the video and I make the rules. So, six thumbs up for this game. This game is awesome. In fact, it's probably better than any Mario Party game. This game's story is that this guy, Gil Hammerstein speaking, is making a movie about Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, and all the other characters are competing for different roles in the movie. To decide who gets the role, you have to do three different auditions, aka mini-games, and whoever wins overall gets the part. In each scene, there are cutscenes with Gil Hammerstein and a random character from the show, who is animated with like five frames for some reason. The game follows that formula through nine different scenes, and afterwards, the overall overall winner gets the part of the supervillain. The mini-games are fun, for the most part. There are way too many to cover every single one, so I'll just hit the highlights. My favorite was this one, where teams of two would swing from peg to peg and try to light them all up. But almost all the mini games are just as fast paced and fun as this one. Oh great, another squirting game. This time we're squirting goo at people? Gross. The game isn't without its faults though. Some mini games are just too confusing, while others are so simplistic that if you mess up once, there's no way to recover. The animations are pretty terrible sometimes. And you know how Mario Party has those preview screens that explain what the mini game is? Well, this game has something similar, but the pictures they use to explain what's going on are the weirdest part of this game. Like, I have no idea what's happening with some of these. But despite all that, the good far outweighs the bad. And at the end of the story mode, you can even watch the movie, which is really just a collection of cutscenes. It's a little weird to see your character play, like, literally every role in this movie, but hey, I like it. You can play any of the unlocked minigames after you finish the story, but there's still more minigames you can get by playing a more difficult story, so that's nice. This might just be me justifying my nostalgia, but I love this game for what it is. A silly, fanservice-y Spongebob party game. And I feel completely comfortable giving this game a fuck ton of thumbs up. Hey, do you like Dodgeball? And, do you like Monsters, Inc? <coughs> well, have I got the game for you. I don't know whose idea it was to make a game just about Dodgeball, let alone make it Monsters, Inc. themed, but here we are. It's just level after level of dodgeball, where you throw balls at dudes, sometimes you throw balls at targets, and that's the entire game. 
What's the reason for this? Well, if we look on the back of the box, apparently the reason is because dodgeball is practice for making kids laugh. Because it's a well-known fact that dodgeball is just the height of comedy. Out of all the games mentioned in this video, this is the only one that I still have the original case for from when I was a kid. A fact that I'm not too proud to admit. Even though I know this game is terrible, there's still a small part of me that's preventing me from completely shunning it. You could say it's something of a guilty pleasure game. So, as a compromise, I'll give this game a thumbs down and a thumbs up. But, I'll invert one and turn another on its side. And yeah, I think that describes my emotions about this game. Once upon a time, in a kingdom just down the road, a misunderstood ogre, a beautiful princess, a lonely donkey, a quiet executioner, a good robber, and a local lord all have wishes. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what you're currently watching. I'm sorry for everything you're about to see. But really, I'm sorry for what you're about to hear. I enjoy this game. I know, I know, I will explain myself soon, I promise, just stick with me here. The game itself is a board based party game, split into 5 different areas, and you decide where you move using this marble, which adds a random element different from the rolling dice. The main objective of the game is to collect bugs and <coughs> precious drops, and those are basically your points to win. Ok, there's no use trying to hide it. The game looks terrible, the story is terrible, the worlds are... Okay, actually. So I can easily understand why people don't like this game in the slightest. But the game has something that redeems itself for me. These mini games, though. There are a total of 30 mini games, and there's not really a single one that I dislike. A lot of them are challenging, and I failed at some of them, but none of them were really unfair. They're not really anything you've never seen before, but they do a good job of being entertaining. I mean, you can play 4 player Pong and Onion Tennis. What more could you ask for? Squirt a snake! Oh my god, there's another squirt game? What is it with party games and squirting people? It's just so weird. Yeah, I'm still sticking to my guns with this one. This game gets a thumbs up. A very unsure, but still determined, thumbs up. All of these games were a part of my childhood in one way or another, but there's definitely a divide between the ones that had any sort of effort put in and the ones that didn't. Just having mini games doesn't really make a party game on its own. There has to be something that shows progression, or some kind of stakes other than in who wins in any given round. It was refreshing to see party games that don't follow the Mario Party formula to a T, even though that doesn't always equate to a better game. But the real question is, can party games still be innovative and new, despite the simplicity of the genre? I don't know. Probably. Thanks for watching the video, hoped you liked it. And if you did, you should subscribe. I mean, that just seems like common sense to me. But if you're still feeling a little unsure, you can check out one of these videos. This one's a terrible review about an okay game, and this one's an okay review about a terrible game. So feel free to pick your poison.